Hello, knife community, knife lovers, knife enthusiasts. Folder here. Uh, I've been wanting to do this video for a long time. I just wanted the right opportunity to do it uh, on the gas station knives. You know, we always talk about the knives that we carry being so much better than gas station knives. You know, and a gas station knife is a knife that has that utilizes low grade materials. Um, <clears throat> things that, uh, you know, aren't, aren't the best craftsmanship or a lot of time doesn't go into making them. So I, I always wanted to do, and I was looking on Amazon the other day, um, actually not really thinking about the gas station knife thing. I was just searching pocket knives on Amazon. I really wasn't going to buy anything. I just wanted to see what they had, like what the, what the market looked like right now on Amazon. And I ran across a knife that looked exactly like one of my decent knives. And I said, but it was a cheap knife. Like it was cheap. Like, you know, it, it cost $13 and 59 cents. And, um, you know, I also do want to point out that in past videos, I meant to say this in one of my other videos, uh, in past videos, I've mentioned knives over a hundred dollars as being cheap. And I don't want to sound insensitive because over $100 might not be cheap to everyone. Okay, I happen to, to buy knives that cost more than that. So I think in the knife community, like you start out by buying knives and there might be a certain amount that in your mind you're saying, I wouldn't spend that for a knife. And then you know, it depends on your pockets, of course, how deep they are and how much you actually like knives. You know, how hard is the passion? And I think it's a step thing. It goes up. You know, you might be willing to pay $10 and then $20 and then $50, you know, and then, you know, there's always going to be a, a a part that levels off, but you, you, you get the, the, the gist, you know? So anyway, so I found this knife. It looked just like one of my other knives. So I said, this is my perfect opportunity to do the cheaper gas station knife video. So I did. So I bought the knife, $13.59 off Amazon. And this is the box that it just came in, just arrived. And it's called Kexmo. Okay. And as you see, it's made in China, which we know that uh, a lot of things made in China are extremely budget and extremely cheap, extremely low quality. They do have some things in China that are high quality. I'm not saying everything is, but for the most part, and this is made in China. So let's just take a look at it. The unboxing. I don't really do many unboxings. Actually, it might be my only unboxing. Okay. And <clears throat> to start off with, says, it says uh, the scope of application. Okay. Uh, so this is for outdoor survival, mountaineering, camping, outdoor sports, tools as gifts, military enthusiasts, enthusiasts, and for a uh, collection, it just says if you're a collector. So they're trying to cover all bases with that, with the Kexmo knife. It came in this uh, nylon case. So, okay, so I guess this thing doesn't have a pocket clip or it has a pocket clip and, it, and they gave you a case. And this is a very cheap case. I know for a fact, this is a cheap case. I can tell by the way the stitching is the uh, and the quality of the, um, of the case, but what do we expect for thirteen dollars and fifty nine cents? Okay, so now let's get rid of this case. We don't need that right now. Okay, so let's see. This is the knife. So, if you're a member of the EDC community and you know knives, um, this knife deeply resembles the uh, Sog Kiku XR. And when I saw it, I was like, holy crap, are they serious? $13? Okay. And it looks just like a Kiko. So here's my, I did a review on this knife uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, maybe less. And this is the uh, initial comparison. And the resemblance is, um, at first glance, un uncanny. It's, it's very much... Uh, resembles the knife not in every aspect we can see the differences right off the top but let's get into it let's dive into it so 
the first thing when you're looking at um the uh the article uh the advertisement in Amazon the reason why I got this knife was a few main reasons one it looked like my my sog my sog it looked like my sog so that's one I I just got this I love this knife and it looks like it okay that's number one number two Keck is the advertisement says Kexmo pocket knife for men <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Pocket knife for men. How sexist is that? So, yeah, at any rate, um, yeah, coming from China, advertising from China, you know, wow, this this jimping is ridiculous. Very sharp. Uh, yeah, so I said, okay. And then um, the other thing is said, it has a G10 handle. I'm like, wow, G10? For $13.59? Okay, let's see. And then I ordered it. So, this has the 13 CR, I mean, I'm sorry, 3 CR 13 stainless steel, which is is basically a low end. It's a very low end budget Chinese steel. So it's it's even budget by Chinese standards. Um, uh, it's it's a hard steel. It's stainless, but it, it, it the problem is it's extremely brittle. So, yeah, the. You know, it's just a budget steal. But what do we expect for thirteen fifty nine? Let's see what else we get. So, start off. Let's just go around the knife. So let's start off by seeing the action. Let's open it up. <laughs> okay. All right. Wow. <sighs> Holy crap. Okay. So, I guess this thing has to be. Okay, so when you're comparing these two, the first major thing you can you can definitely tell is that the uh, the lock. So it's the lock bar. This has a uh, a liner lock or well, a frame lock. Yeah, well, it's considered a liner lock actually. Steel liners, and yeah as compared to uh, SOG's version of the Access. So they, of course, they they went budget there. And you can see the difference where it doesn't have the locking mechanism, obvious. But also, um, <laughs> wow, okay, so, all right, let's see what's going on with this thing. Before I even start a review, it's um maybe it's just too tight. Uh let's see, what do we have? T eight here. Okay. So we have a T eight. Okay. Oh, We don't want to lose that. All right, so a T8, and I'm sure, I love this thing. I'm sure it's a T6s, and they are. Okay. So before I even go around the knife to really start assessing what's what, this thing, the action is just absolutely horrible. I can't even flick this thing. It's not moving. I And I can't tell if it has washers or bearings. Okay. All right, so, so far, this G10 handle really feels like just plastic. I mean, it, yeah, okay, expected. And it has a, a full... This metal liner here, and is this just a nylon washer? Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. 
Wow. Okay. All right. Well, you know, let's get back to it. You know, thirteen dollars and fifty nine cents, and this this is part of the reason why. You know, we spend a little bit more money than that. It's a nylon washer. Uh, inside the blade here, and that's that's what the action on this um. That's what the action's rolling on. Um. And it's a thick nylon washer also. I think if you have a thinner nylon washer with phosphorus bronze washers, you could probably get better action. Um, they just have that nylon washer sticking in there. And the action is just... It's not, uh, it's not good. But then again, what did we expect? Okay. So... Like I'm all over the place with this guy's trying to uh what did I do with the other screw? Oh come on. Really? Just had it. Oh. Huh. The power of magnets. Okay. So that's back together and uh Yeah. It's it's the action is is absolutely horrible. It it really is bad. It just has no movement. Um, I left the bolt, the center uh, pivot bolt, a little loose on purpose so that I could see if I could get some action going on this thing. There's no movement. That, well, no, there is movement. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna spend time trying to tune this up. I actually have phosphorus bronze washers that I could put in this to make the action better, but that's not what this is about. So let's move forward. So let's start off with the blade. Uh, as I said, the steel is uh, three CR13 stainless. Um, it's a low-end budget steel. Uh, as you see, the blade itself, uh, the finish. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, they tried to put a shine on it, so it technically has a little bit of a cheaper, a cheaper look. Uh, putting Kexmo. On the uh, hollow here is um, that's definitely cheesy, and I I don't even see any branding on the type of steel. It just says it in the comments that it's uh, 3CR13. Uh, so when you compare it to the uh, the SOG, I mean the SOG Kiku XR, uh, what do we notice right off the hand? Um, oh. Okay, so it's actually not the same shape. Uh, they went a little cheaper, as we could imagine. This is just hollowed. So they, they did the harpoon, right? They say have the same uh, type of... Oh, yeah, also, too, in the comments, they call this a thumb stud. <laughs> I thought that was funny. It says thumb stud. Uh, also, whew. Yeah, the jimping on top of this is razor sharp. I mean, oh my goodness. Yeah, you could literally cut your hand on this jimping. That's some sharp jimping. And they didn't bother putting any on the um on the handle here. So it's just on the blade, but it it stops there. And the difference also, like I said, with the blade is they hollowed uh the entire uh sharpened edge is hollowed instead of the dual grind on the SOG hollow and then a flat, you know, where they did the, the um, you know, they wanted that aesthetic, so they did that dual grind. And as you can see, it was not done here. Now, uh, is that necessarily a bad thing? Not really, not really. Um, I actually like the idea that this is hollowed. I mean, I think with this blade stock, I think it, it kinda, if you want something a little bit better, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at the hollow at all. Uh, you know, this is thicker, much thicker blade stock. Um, not pulling out my, my micrometer because it's not that serious, 
But, um, yeah. So, okay, so yeah, so that's the deal with the blade. Uh, with the action, it's very difficult to flick this, and I don't want to, I don't want to hurt myself with this thing. It, it's just really difficult and not necessary. And, so, okay, so let's move on. Uh, there's no jimping on the back. That's another difference. They did the jimping, um, in the rear of the handle here, but there's actually no, uh, they didn't do a spacer. They didn't do a back spacer on this one. They did the uh, the standoffs with the T6s, which, you know, are very small. You know, and also, too, uh, it's got this steel liner in it, but it's, you know, it's a very cheap budget steel. Uh, I don't mind the liner lock on this. You know, where does where is the lock up? Yeah, it's actually pretty firm, man. For a piece of crap, yeah, it doesn't have any movement here. It, it's actually pretty locked up, pretty good. I mean, for thirteen dollars, you know, and um. So when we go to the uh, clip side, you can see the pocket clip is dramatically different. This is a deep carry. This is not. Uh, and you can only do this single sided. So it's only right hand carry with, with uh, that much showing. That's where the deep carry stops. I mean the carry, not the deep carry. Yeah, pocket clip is, you know, it, it just doesn't look, you know. If you look at, uh, if you look at this edge of the pocket clip right here, it, it hangs off the back of the G10. So there's, there's no, the finish here is not good. They could have cut this shorter or made it curve around if they if they wanted to. In my review of this knife, I criticize the lanyard hole slot, whatever this thing is. I criticize this thing because the deep pocket covers it on this side, you know, and just the fact that they could have put like a glass breaker here instead of putting this deep carry. As terrible as this thing is, the deep carry is not affected anyway by the clip, as you can see. I mean, not the deep carry, the um, right, the lanyard hole. You know, isn't being covered like it is here, partially covered like it is here. That jimping that's on the bottom. There's no jimping on the flipper tab. Yeah, there's no jimping at all, and it it needs it. It it really needs it. I mean, with this, with the washes being what they are, and the action being so terrible on this, there's no traction here at all. Like I can't even flip this. Look, as hard as I can. Oof. Yeah, that's um. Ouch. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt myself with this thing. Yeah, so that's that's uh, you know. So th where this has that jimping, this does not. You know, it has some jimping back here. It's just it's funny because the jimping back here is like non-existent. It just feels like almost nothing. And then the jimping up here on the blade is ridiculously aggressive. Um, so yeah, uh, the detent. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel it. it. It's really low, though. It's like, holy crap, like, hello, hello. Are you going to kick in? Wow. Yeah, definitely. Uh... Oh, okay. Big difference. Wow. That kicks in there. And this is like, 
Hello? Anybody home? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, listen, what do, what do we expect? But that that's the difference. So, the blade is, um, this is uh, Carpenter's CTX XHP, which is one of the best steels out there. An excellent, excellent steel. Okay, by SOG. This is a budget low end Chinese steel, 3 CR13. That is extremely stainless, from what I understand, but it's brittle. You will break this. You will break this blade messing around. Okay, especially with all the things it says it's for. The G10 is extremely cheap. G10. It doesn't feel like, um, I'll use my um, Blades We Love uh, PM2 as an example with this. Uh, with this G10 and um, yeah you know it's not that bad I mean it's not as good as this obviously but it's not that bad uh, the pivot is terrible the fact that it uses sixes on here is you know there's no uh, the action is horrible uh, how sharp is this thing oh yeah yeah, it didn't come with an edge. It's not sharp. It's not sharp at all. It looks sharp, actually, but it's really not. Yeah. Yeah. Big difference. So, it didn't come with an edge. The pocket clip is insane. Let me put it in my pocket, see how it feels. <sighs> Okay, I mean, it's all right. You can get it in and get it out. Not a problem. Uh, this whole metal liner, is, it's, you know, the whole entire knife. I didn't weigh this either. You know, my scale's not up here. I'm not going to weigh it. It's, it's irrelevant to the quality. Uh, T6 is, like I said, the pocket clip. The whole way this thing is designed... Yeah, it's budget, you know. Uh, so, could we fix this thing? Could we get it halfway decent? We could. You know, if you don't mind the budget steel, I would recommend putting some Foster Braun washes in here. I have some that I ordered oh, some time back. I have, you know, quite a few of them, so I can just stick them in there and put a sharpened edge on it, a better edge on it, you know. And um, for $13... You know, if you can get the action going on this thing and put an edge on it for 13 bucks, you know, yeah, but yeah, so this is a gas station knife and, um, you know, comparing it to, you know, the SOG, it's, it's a long way away from this, it, even the way it feels to fit and finish, you know, is a long way away. And this is using Micarta anyway, not G10 and it's very nice, has the groove in the middle. You know, they they attempted to uh, replicate it in some ways, but they didn't go out to spend any money to do it. So, anyway, that's all I got, right? Your budget Kexmo, Kexmo knife from China, you know? <laughs> you know, I recommend, um, yeah, just spend a little more than $13. You know, I, I respect every viewer out there. I really, I do, and... Um, and uh, I understand everyone doesn't have the same financial situation and, and there's different challenges out there. But uh, if you like knives and you can't afford to get something a little bit more, then rather than um, quantity, I would recommend you go for quality. Just, you know, wait, so, you know, save your money. You know, take, be surprised what you put in a piggy bank, you know, change. You know, and then you wait, you wait, you wait, and next thing you know, wow, you know what, I got it. And then you go out and you buy something that you can be proud of. Um, something preferably made in America. It doesn't have to be made in America, but American-made knives, you know, um, they cost more because, the, you know, obviously the labor is a lot higher here. But they're also very good. You know, when you look at the American-made knives out there, I'm not really sure if there's any bad ones. You know, companies that make these things here, 
they go out their way to make sure they're putting a good product because they're going to charge more. So, um, you know. Also, the blade is terrible. Centering is absolutely whew, horrible. Yeah. Yeah, of course. The fit and finish is, is where it's going to be. You know, your problems. So, anyway, that's all I got. Go out and get yourself uh, a decent knife, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, get get something, you know, save your pennies and and then uh, go out and buy something just a little bit more quality than a $13.59 uh, Kexmo. Kexmo with the lion on the cover. All right, that's all I got. Take care.